Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explain discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by John Cartwright and Bell Aim to give our thoughts on the Pokemon Direct, which was filled with a ton of new stuff. So let's just dive right into it. And right off the bat, uh, we have a remake of the original Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and two DLC expansion packs for Pokemon, which seems pretty major. So overall, how are you guys feeling about this? Amy, what do you think? I'm pretty excited about the uh, the new DLC, basically. The new areas look really cool. I like what they've done there. They have like new costumes and new Pokemon. And my boy Bulbasaur is coming <laughs> back. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, John? Yeah, I'll apologize to the Mystery Dungeon fans. This panel is not a, a Mystery Dungeon enthusiast panel, but I will say it looks gorgeous. The art style looks absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. And hopefully this gets me into the series, because I have tried it. I've dabbled before, but I've never really got into Mystery Dungeon, but maybe this will be the one. Uh, we, we commented as we were watching, John, that the art style in this game is very reminiscent of like the artwork that they used for uh, Red uh, Rescue Team. And mm. that's really cool to see. It's a it's a nice. Uh, it keeps it simple, but it's stylized enough that I'm I'm really enjoying the look of it. And uh, I'm I'm very curious to check out that demo myself to see if maybe this is the one that'll get me into it because I've heard from so many people that these games are amazing, or at least the story is amazing, and people go nuts for them, um, mm -hmm. which seems incredible to me because the concept is just. You get transformed into a Pokemon, and now you got to rescue other Pokemon. It's all about the power of friendship, and like that seems so basic. So how do they go beyond that? Uh, I'm, I'm quite curious. So definitely going to give that demo a try, but why? Why in March? <laughs> I know, it's just joining the, the heap of all these other games. Uh, at, at the very least, though, um, it is cool that the Switch is getting a Pokemon spin-off. I know we've had Pokemon DX, but apart from that, um, a lot of Pokemon Pokemon games have been focused on mobile. So it's just very cool to see that this might be the future of, of um, later spin-offs as well. So yeah, yeah it, lo it looks good. And um, we used, as you said, the, the backgrounds um, have this really cool illustrated style. But even the 3D models um, look really good in this style. The shaders they put on them um, match so well with, with everything go else going on on screen. Um, just, it's a really pleasing aesthetic. Yeah, mm. it kind of gives me like a Winnie the Pooh vibe. I really like mm. it. <laughs> yeah. And a little bit of Nino Kuni for some reason. I don't know. It's like a storybook mm. and the uh, models don't seem too out of place. So that's awesome. Yeah, it looks uh, quite gorgeous. And I'm interested to try it out. I don't know if I'll get to it because... Again, March, and I think that's right around the time Final Fantasy VII Remake is coming out. So, mm, two March. nostalgia yeah. properties. Isn't it the same day? day? Is, is it, are they both March 3rd? Uh, this is March 4th, so it's a day after oh, okay. Final Fantasy VII Remake. So, I guess something oh, for the Switch fans that don't have a PS4. So, there you go. <laughs> uh, you know, as far as, you know, if you don't have other consoles, it's not a big deal. But if, you know, if you're only holding yourself over until Animal Crossing, this is perfect. If you have other consoles, <laughs> it, it, screw you. <laughs> That's what it feels the tidal like. Tidal wave. March is the tidal wave of games. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Um, but yeah, that, they spent a little bit of time on it, and we got that demo coming. But obviously, the major bit that they focused on, so much so that they played the trailer, what, two, three times? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was getting confused. I was like, wait, I've already seen this. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Really has to sink in. <laughs> yeah, really, you have to really understand it. But yeah, we have expansion passes coming to, uh, for Sword and Shield that basically serve as our third versions. They even specified that they're not doing a third version. They brought up like Platinum and Emerald mm -hmm. and they're like, nope, this this is it. And that, yeah. is, that is massive. Um, they've mm -hmm. always sold another full price Pokemon game like a year after release. And um, just building up, up on Sword and Shield is a massive change from that. Yeah, it is. I actually like it because you get to use all your current Pokemon, everything you've already done, any items that you've collected, you can bring that all with you and just expand your adventure. So I'm actually pretty excited about that. You don't have to start all over from scratch. Mm -hmm. Me too. It's a lot to take in. Like there's, there's so many details packed into this trailer. And it also feels like they're kind of teasing some stuff too. Um, they didn't, didn't show that much of the Crown Tundra. It was, it was primarily focused on gameplay for the Isle of Armor. 
Um, but even with that, it's not just a new location, it's not just new gear, it's not just new Pokemon, it's not just new returning Pokemon, it's, it's just new everything. There's so yeah. much to take in with this stuff. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. said 200 new Pokemon are coming to the game, so there's you know, we have some obvious new ones, uh, like, uh, I'm going to completely forget the new, their names, but that Pokemon that you're going to get in the Isle of Armor when you get to the dojo, and you have its evolution, which... The Slowpoke? No, 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 the brand Kub-fu, new one. it was Kubfu, it was called. It was like a Kung oh, Fu Pokemon. That's yeah. it, Kubfu. Kubfu, but wasn't that the like legendary version? No, no, something? no. That's the it... pre-evolution before it gets it got, uh, yeah gets its new one, uh, which has two forms. I'm wondering if you have to choose. Yeah, it has two forms. So do you only get to choose one, and then you're stuck with that choice, or do you get it, to choose? If I had to guess, way, uh, the single strike one is exclusive to shield. The multi strike one is exclusive to sword because the, they were. Uh, highlighted by blue and red, which are the sort of shield that colors. Too. So that'd they didn't be my mention guess. It specifically. They didn't, but it seems likely to try to get you. Well, if you if you want both, you got to buy both expansion passes for both your versions. If you want to get everything, <laughs> so it, it, it's it's a very Pokemon thing to do. And they've even done that kind of with uh, Slowpoke there, because you know they have this update coming out later today, which will introduce Galarian's Slowpoke into the game. And you can get him, but he'll only evolve with a certain item uh, from the um, Isle of Armor uh, into Slowbro, and then Galarian Slow King comes from the Crown Tundra. So, uh, and they didn't, they didn't even show off the designs of those, um, but it just it just really shows like, all right, all the legendaries are coming with the Crown Tundra. We got this new co-op mode. We got uh, you know all of this <laughs> stuff and. Uh, the incredible thing is, the, our, a lot of people's ideas of the wild area being a test bed for future Pokemon games and how they might just be fully 3D from now on seems to be gaining more steam with uh, both these DLC expansion passes because the entire those entire uh, areas are going to be like the wild area. I'm mm. so happy about that. I love having camera control. <laughs> Same here. Oh, in in a lot so of good. ways, um, watching this presentation was like watching a new generation of Pokemon. Like, they were showcasing not only these, these entirely new areas, but they play differently too. Like, the wild area is a hub, um, whereas this seems to be like a connected hub. Everything's in this area. All these caves, all these Pokemon dens. Um, whereas the wild area doesn't work like that. The wild area is just literally in and of itself. Uh, and then you got all these new Pokemon designs. They're sort of showing these um, these illustrations. It, it feels it doesn't feel like Gen Eight. <laughs> it kind of feels like Gen Nine in a way. <laughs> I know it's so crazy. I, I like that they're taking new steps and they're branching out a little bit and expanding on the testers they did in the main game, like with the three D section with the main camera. Like, ah, mm-hmm. oh, it's so cool. And that Calyrex, however you pronounce it, looks really neat. I love its kangaroo head. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I just want to know more about these and see the world and explore. And the new outfits, too. I'm really hyped about that. Yeah. So cool. They had a lot of fun. Like, you can dress up as Marnie. You can dress up as uh, Team Flare members or you, you just <laughs> previous villains. Like, they really went all out with uh, the costumes and the hairstyles and all that, which people have been wanting. And I'm sure they have more in there. It's really cool uh, and fun expansions on upon, upon what's already there and to me this pretty much confirms no new actual pokemon game this year it's probably going to be solely focused on the expansions absolutely yeah. yeah i wouldn't be at all surprised if there's like a game of the year edition at some point where they saw it in the main game with the dlc yeah but mm-hmm. yeah there's not going to be a third version or, yeah. or at least not another core pokemon game that's probably the November release. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you guys think that they'll have another expansion to bring in the remaining Pokemon so that all of them will be able to be here? Especially with incorporating home so that all Pokemon can be there. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, look, it's, it's 200 more Pokemon, so we're, like, what, at 600 in the in the, in the total around, deck? So we're still lacking around. Yeah, 600, around. which I think the actual total is around, is getting close to 900, so mm-hmm. I, we're a, two-thirds of the way there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I so reckon I, it's hard to say. Uh, they could, um, they could stop the updates at some point, and then maybe bring in another update when the next game's out, when that game has the full decks. So like maybe the next remakes will complete the decks, mm-hmm. and then an update for Sword and Shield will come out. But I don't know. It, it's very hard to say. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because I was just wondering, like, do you think they'll do this again, where there's even more world that we can explore that has the other Pokemon to make it a complete 
integration with home so that you can have everything in there you can bring everything into home it's, i don't know that's that was what i was thinking when they were talking about it but i i have no idea mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um it's still like they, they, there's a good roadmap here like 200 new pokemon is a lot um they've definitely yeah. laid out the year they could have just um just focused on the first part the isle of armor which comes in june they didn't have to focus on the crown tundra which is the fall but i think it's very good they did uh, they're just showing you mm-hmm. everything that's planned for the year and that there is a plan. Because I know a lot of Pokemon fans are just freaking out thinking that they don't know what they're doing. And this just kind of shows that they're, they're, they at least have a roadmap planned out. Um, but I am seeing online some people not very happy that the new Pokemon are only catchable in these new expansions. Um, which I understand, but also they did specify you can trade them. Yes. And I, especially for the brand new Pokemon, I don't have a problem with that. But I can see the point of view that older Pokemon maybe should have been integrated into the wild area. And maybe they will. Mm. It's hard to say exactly what they'll do there. We still don't know. Um, it, the, the, the bigger problem with that is because we don't have the global trade system where you can just search for a Pokemon and ask somebody to trade it f- with you. Um, That's a good point. That makes it a lot harder to get those. So now you need to have a friend that is willing to pay for that extra money for the expansion pass in order to get those other Pokemon. And that is an issue. But they did at least take the route where you can trade it. Because they could have just said, oh, they're not compatible. So at Mm. least they did that. I kind Mm. of was thinking that they would have those in the raids. In the original game, and they but might. I guess they didn't. They didn't really specify, so it's hard to say. I guess mm-hmm. I just assumed that they would, but not with the new ones, with the older ones. Mm-hmm. Right. We did our predictions the other day, and we actually kind of nailed parts of this. Um, we said that there would be a DLC that kind of acts mm-hmm. like a third version, but this still went beyond my my expectations. I didn't think they would have so much in here. I didn't think there'd be yeah. so many new costumes. I didn't think there'd be basically two new wild areas. I was definitely not expecting the uh, new worlds. That was that was wild, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited about those, though. Those got me excited. And um, the new rivals, too. I was not expecting that. It seems like an actual additional story. There's There might actually be some more story that we can explore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, super cool. I mean, we got mustard <laughs> which is just <laughs> a heck of a name mustard. who is apparently the mentor of uh leon which you know is cool and he was previously the champion so that's always neat and having expanding that lore and whatnot we have these two other rivals we don't get a sense of their personality yet but the designs are fun um we got poison and psychic which they were wearing the gym uniform so that when i first saw them i actually thought i was like oh crap are they actually integrating in the other gyms <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool, yeah, because of that course there's be. more in the lore of, of Galuf than just the current existing gems. That'd be really cool. Mm-hmm. I'd love that. Yeah. I kind of wish Clara was in S.H.I.E.L.D. because that's the version I have and I really <laughs> like her design. <laughs> there was a point in the trailer where they showcased three new legendary Pokemon and um, I, I'm wondering if they are entirely new because they look like Galarian, Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I was it's, wondering about that. It's three new legendary that. birds. Yeah, and they look extremely similar to those designs. Like you can sort of see Zapdos's like spiky hair. You can see uh, Moltres' silhouette. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. these might be Galarian legendaries. It might be. That's what I thought. It, there's. We also have new of the... Um, oh, I'm blanking on the names, but the ones that require a Morse code... Uh, from mm-hmm. Gen oh, 3. Oh, right, yeah. The, uh, the Reggie The ones? Reggies, the Reggie line. Um, mm. Looks like we have new Reggies as well. So, yeah, they're really diving deep with the, the legendaries here and giving us new ones. And, uh, you know, we got new Gigantamax forms for not only uh, Venusaur and Blastoise, but the Galarian starters as well, which is really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that... Um, <laughs> Galarian, uh, the uh, Gigantamax Inteleon is only slightly bigger, but he's on top of like a sniper's <laughs> nest. <laughs> exactly. That is amazing. There's your, there's your Pokemon so gun. <laughs> I, I think um, <laughs> yeah. the, Galar- the uh, Gigantamax starters are the one area where I sort of thought maybe this should have been in the base game. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think that to me did feel kind of like, oops, we ran out of time. We couldn't include it in. It was maybe supposed to be. So here it is. <laughs> We're uh, ready now. That's kind of yeah. how it felt to me. Because I haven't actually finished the game. So honestly, I thought that that was already in the game. Whenever I was watching it originally, I was like, oh, cool. I haven't seen them yet. <laughs> That's because they're not even in the game yet. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay with a lot of this new stuff. I'm okay with there being brand new Pokemon for the DLC. 
Um, but yeah, just just that one point in there, it's like, that, that's kind of simple, and I, I kind of did it, I expected it in the main game. I expected the starters Gigantamax, but they can't. Um, yeah. So that, yeah, that was a bit weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That said, I, you know, it's it's one of those things that really got to see what they have. For the roadmap right now, it seems pretty decent. Heck, they're adding a co-op mode to the Crown Tundra, where you where you work together to catch the legendary Pokemon. That's mm-hmm. really cool. I'm looking forward to that. That's neat. I wonder if it's going to be more involved than the uh, Let's Go co-op, or if it's going to be pretty similar to that. I reckon it's going to be like the Wild Area uh, multiplayer, mm-hmm. but hopefully with um, I th- the, the legendaries are basically in this giant cave, right? So mm-hmm. I I would hope that that being a smaller area means that the networking would work better. But hopefully, we'll see. Uh, my hope is it's kind of like well raids and MMOs where you work together through the dungeon, have to do things together in order to get um, pull it off, and then fight the legendary at the end. That might be yeah. a little bit too communicative for Pokemon, <laughs> um, Maybe. but I mean, there's there's potential here to be sure. It's all an exciting step forward. Like all of the stuff they've shown of the two new areas seem like a step forward for the franchise, um, and it's it's exciting to see Sword and Shield get this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I definitely want to get this pass. Yeah, and it's not too bad. Uh, it's thirty dollars for the pass. It looks like um, mm-hmm. for both. So yep. um, that's not bad at all to uh, get each of those. And, of course, you have to buy it twice if you want one for sword and one for shield. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but still. Well, it's definitely better than spending $60 on a brand new game. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Half of that. And if you compare <laughs> yeah. it to the like, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, uh, it's, it's only 10 bucks more. Because <laughs> if you bought Sun and Moon and then bought Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So, since I haven't finished the uh, original game yet, does the bike change looks in that no. as well, or is this brand new? That's okay. brand new. There's a okay. lot of new stuff. That's pretty cool. And mm-hmm. the hair's colors, too. It looks like you can do, like, pink and other crazy colors like that. Mm-hmm. Could you not do that in the original, either? Nope. You c- well, um, well, not that color. You could change your color, but not that color. Mm. I see. Not the funky colors. Exactly. They're getting more wild this time. <laughs> uh, which I'm I'm cool with. This is yeah. This is all a lot of fun, and I'm curious to see how it's all going to shape up as we go along. Um, and I think overall, this was a pretty good direct. I, I expect some people are going to be definitely upset about Pokemon being locked behind any expansion pass, but hey, as I said, at least there's new gameplay to go along with it. Right. Mm-hmm. At, at least you can trade them. Like, it's not like you can't obtain them. But, of course, to catch them yourself, you are going to buy the DLC. Mm-hmm. Right. Which, this is Pokemon. People are going to complain, but they're going to buy it. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> they're going to yeah. buy it. That's true. There might be a few holdouts, yeah. but most, for the most part, they're going to buy it because it looks good. It looks fun. And I like, I like the idea of having the opportunity to take a lot of the um, ways that Sword and Shield refined the formula and made things much more streamlined and apply it to something new where it can t- maybe take advantage of that. Oh, for sure. Like, there's a... The escape rope is now a key item, and you barely ever used it in the core game, mm-hmm. and I can see it... <laughs> I can see it being way better for that legendary cave. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, I mean... It's going to be interesting having to cover that. <laughs> uh, so, I don't have a new Pokemon game to cover. I have expansions to cover which is going to be weird i'm not sure how this is going to go for me this year but it's we'll different see. <laughs> any other thoughts on the pokemon direct i'm just excited for a bigger post game um because this basically is one giant elaborate post game yeah pretty much and it seems yeah. having like two more wild areas just to run around in and chill out in that's going to be good like i, I have fun in the current wild, wild area it's just mm-hmm. there isn't that much to do but having double or triple the content is you know that's a great thing mm-hmm. yeah Exactly. I'm excited about it. And on a minor note, are you guys looking more forward to the Isle of Armor or Crown of Tundra? Because I, I think the Isle of Armor is really calling to me. I love that. It looks so summery and warm, and I like the dojo and the training. I don't I don't know. That one to me sounds really <laughs> exciting. It's tricky to say, because I think they're focusing more on the um, on the Isle of Armor. But um, the Crown Tundra, having those legendaries to catch, that's going to be really fun. Yeah. Especially if they team up and have like gigantic or you know Dynamax forms to make it a little bit more epic and 
interesting. So yeah, that is true. That it has potential, <laughs> but you know, for right now, I think Isle of Armor is a good first step, and to see how they expand upon it. But uh, for now, I think that covers it for our uh, Pokemon Direct discussion. So thank you for watching, and if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain, and of course, be sure to subscribe for Game. Some- and of course, be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Pokemon, including an analysis, a uh, coverage of the upcoming demo of the Pokemon uh, Mystery Dungeon remake, and plenty more as well. Uh, so yeah, be sure to t- stay tuned for that, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>